I have the M1 iMac 24 inch and the M1 iPad Pro with that lovely XDR display. However, what's it like to use this thing with Sidecar? Well, that's in today's video. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Car Moon, we uncover Apple tech and Apple related tech. So hit that subscribe and like button if that's what you're into. But today I'm gonna connect these two things up and see what Sidecar is like and the overall limitations of it. So right over here, I've got the M1 iMac 24 inch and over here, I've got the iPad Pro M1 and this is the 12.9 inch with the XDR display. So to connect it up really simple just go into iPad uh, go into sidecar sorry click on the iPad and there you go almost instantly it's connected up now I'm going to run a few tests here because I really want to see what the capability of running this as sidecar see the touch functionality I've even got the Apple pencil as well so to see you know again how it functions with that on top so I've got a few tests so first of all I want to do an HDR test so I've got Safari running with an HDR video with a whole bunch of tabs to really kind of stress this system out just to see how it handles and everything like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press play and just see how it looks. And yeah, it looks fine. Again, this isn't an HDR display because it only has 500 nits of brightness, whereas this one over here has uh, 1000 nits of brightness with a peak of 1600 nits of brightness uh, when playing HDR content. Now, typically when you're running it like this, it goes to a maximum of 600 nits, so not much brighter than the iMac display. But what I want to do is, is I just want to see how the HDR content looks on this screen versus this screen. So it definitely looks better um, now I don't know if it looks as good as when I was running the, oh, and it's kicked me out. So that's really interesting. So this is great that we've got it on video. So it can, and I've got to now use my face ID. So it does kick you out. So again, it all depends on your Wi-Fi, but for some reason it did kick me out. So let's disconnect and then reconnect. So again, this does happen to me sometimes. Now, I don't know why it does it. Sometimes it's really stable, sometimes it's really not. Uh, to be honest, it only happened to me a handful of times, but I'm glad I got it on video. So whether you're playing HDR video, maybe that might be pushing the system too much. But yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if it looks better on this rather than using the YouTube app, but it still looks really, really good. So what I also want to do is, is now I've got Safari running, using the Apple Pencil, can I use the touch display? Yeah, so I can. So I can use the touch display to, yeah, play and pause, can I, yeah. So it's almost like using a mouse on your iPad. So in terms of scrolling, yeah, so you can scroll, so two finger scroll, you can do. So it's almost like using the um, mouse, you can finger scroll absolutely fine. In terms of zooming and pinching in, yep, we can pinch in and zoom in, no problems whatsoever. So we can use the iPad screen, which is pretty cool. And again, we're getting the full experience of Safari on this as well, which is really nice. Now, does it work with the Magic Keyboard? So let's have a look. Yeah, so the keyboard itself actually works which is really interesting, okay. Now, if I go into here and then type something in, so yeah, so the keyboard works absolutely fine. Now, does the trackpad work? Okay, no, so the, oh, it does some weird stuff, oh, hello. So the trackpad kind of works, but it's definitely confusing it quite a bit, so, yeah, definitely not recommended. I would probably say using the Apple Pencil might be a bit easier, but if you wanna do any scrolling and stuff like that, yeah. I mean, the touch experience using Sidecar isn't fantastic. So it's more using it as an external display just by that quick test. So if you wanted to know how it works with touch, it's okay, but I wouldn't sort of say, yes, you can use the touch experience. It's gonna be exactly the same as using the iPad with its touch experience. Mac OS is definitely not designed for touch, and especially with this iPad sidecar thing. Again, it does work with touch, but it's not fantastic. My next test is to run Final Cut. So we've got Final Cut just over here. 
and I'm going to maximize it. Now, the great benefit of having two displays is that rather than having uh, the viewer over here, because we've got a fantastic HDR display over here, what we can do is, is if I just get rid of the um, color grading panel, now I can play all my content on here and then edit everything on here. So what I've done is I've got some uh, footage right over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it all down. In terms of view, can I use that? Yes, I can. So using the touch, it does work fine. So that's pretty cool. So it's playing absolutely fine. If I that's playing the content fine. Now, is it stuttering? I can see it stuttering a little bit. Is it playing it absolutely perfectly? Yeah, it's almost like running the display directly connected, which is very, very cool. So absolutely fine, works well. If I use the mouse on here, so again, using the touch, no, it doesn't really do anything. Yeah, so in terms of actually an editing experience, I would say that this is actually really, really ideal because you've got a super color accurate display that can edit HDR content and you've got a super powerful M1 machine that can edit this kind of uh, footage and you're not having to worry about relying on this display because you can do all of your, you know, hard timeline stuff on here. And yes, okay, you know, 12, uh, 12 12.9 inches isn't exactly the biggest display to be working from, but even when you're working on a 32 inch display, typically your viewer is only about, let's say 13 to 14 inches anyway on a 27 inch display or even 32 inch display. So actually this is pretty much gonna be, if I just pull it out, so I'm just gonna pull it out. For example, that's like having your, uh, your image taking up that much of the screen, which is probably quite typical in a standard edit. So on a 24 inch display, I mean, yes, this is probably the typical size you would have it, but you would actually have a much better and more color accurate display and just a brighter display for editing your photos and videos, which is really, really cool. So as, as for a proper, you know, display, you're not gonna find really a better display than this for a thousand pounds. I mean, and it obviously is a tablet at the same time. So in terms of the video editing experience, I I would say it's pretty good, like in terms of cutting and stuff. So let's knock it out of here and let's have a look at the photo editing experience. So if we pop Affinity Photo just over here, so they, just to let you know, they do actually have uh, an iPad version of this application, but in my opinion, it's not fantastic. Uh, now you can use, this, which definitely has a lot more functionality on the Mac version than it does on the iPad version. And yeah, there's, it's not like super smooth, like when I'm sort of doing it, the touch controls definitely aren't 100% smooth, but let's, for example, I don't know, add some text. So yeah, using the pencil probably isn't the easiest thing. So let's just see, you know, if there's any delays. Okay, cool. Let's go back. And let's copy all of that. I don't know, let's uh, just call it Apple uh, Sidecar. I don't know. Anyway, right, uh, it's actually just one word, but anyway. So yeah, you can do some photo editing. There's literally almost no issues with that. Um, you know, you can, yeah, you can edit absolutely fine. Let's add some vibrance. Uh, let's go into the curves. Let's do a standard sort of little S curve to it. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, you you can edit in this. And note the mouse again doesn't doesn't really work. But in terms of the typing experience, yes, we can use both keyboards. So if you have the magic mouse, yeah, that'll work absolutely fine. And yes, you can use the touch controls. It's not probably as smooth as the iPad version using Affinity Photo, but it definitely does work. And as you can see, now I've got side by side, so I could be, let's say, editing a video just over here and then having a photo editing program on this side. And yeah, with Sidecar, there is almost, 
no delay. So as you can see, the overall experience is okay. Now it's not fantastic if you tried to start using this touchscreen uh, with the macOS system, because macOS clearly is just not built for touch. They clearly haven't sorted out some of the bugs when you're trying to use the touchscreen on the iPad Pro. However, if you're just using it as an external display, it works really well. Now features like the Apple Pencil and the Apple Keyboard, Magic Keyboard, work pretty well together. However, as you saw, when I'm trying to drag or pinch and zoom and stuff like that, it could be a lot better. Now, what does this mean for you guys? So what this means is that even if you didn't buy the Pro XDR display and you have an iPad, the overall experience with connecting it via Sidecar is fantastic. And this will work just to let you know, not just with the M1 24 inch iMac, but will work with other MacBooks and uh, Mac minis as well. So if you wanted this experience, you can do it with pretty much any of the Apple products. However, the reason why I went for this setup is because this could be your family sort of computer. And then let's say you wanted to edit off of this machine, but you needed a slightly better display. Well, for a thousand pounds or a thousand bucks, this Pro XDR display-ish like in a 12.9 inch form factor is really, really good. And you can edit photos and videos off of it and just use this as sort of like editing your timeline and everything like that. So the overall experience is good in my opinion, but it could be better. I think Apple definitely has to do a little bit more in terms of Mac OS and Sidecar and getting it working quite well with this touchscreen system because I just feel like there are just too many little bugs to really use this as, as a screen uh, to work from. You really kind of have to work from this screen and then use this as an external display. That's the best way that I think Apple really want to push rather than you, let's say, using a Mac mini or something like that and then using this as your main display that you can touch and play around with. Let me know down in the comments below if you use Sidecar and what your overall experience is and if it was any different to mine. Also, check out the links down in the description to support the channel as that, pr I promise you, does help me out a lot. Anyway, if you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechHarmoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. But if you want to see more from me right now, you guys know what to do. There's two fantastic videos right over here. Go ahead, click them. You'll absolutely enjoy them. Anyway, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.